We're all good. Uh, Draka, down here, straight in front. Uh, congratulations on the win tonight. Um, obviously, in, after the fight, you, you had a few words to say about British people. Uh, what, what, what was kind of going through your mind at that point? And I, I guess, what, why did you come to the conclusion that we're all bums? Nah, uh, it was just the heat of the moment, man. Uh, if you look on my Twitter, like, you know, me and him been going uh, back and forth uh, as soon as the fight was announced. Uh, he just started tweeting me, just, you know, just, and then uh, after the fight, it just got under my skin, you know, and just whatever came to my head, I just, uh, you know, just let it go. Uh, my, my roommate right now is Bradley Scott, and he's an English guy, and he's fighting in uh, August 5th, so. Ah. Uh, Hey, he, hey, he's here. I'm going to tell him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't think that, you know, it was just the heat of the moment. Uh, I apologize, you know, to everyone, you know, for saying that, so. Let's uh, start. We saw you come in on crutches. I think during the fight, we were kind of a little wondering about your leg. Can you give us the update on, on, on what happened, kind of when it happened, and how that affected you? Uh, it's when uh, he went southpaw, and uh, I threw a kick, and he checked it. It was a, it was a good check. Um, I didn't feel it during the fight, but you know, after the fight, uh, that's when the pain started kicking in. Talk about your performance overall and, and, and kind of how you felt, because it, it was a great fight, it was a close fight, and of course it went to a split decision. I mean, how did you feel about your performance and, and, and were you certain that you had done enough to win? In my head, I thought I won every round. Um, I don't think it should have been a split decision. Uh, you know, Marks, he has all his hype on him. Uh, I knew that he wasn't going to be as tough as everyone thought. You know, a lot of you guys probably took Mark uh, thinking he was going to knock me out. Uh, I just had to prove y'all wrong. And last thing, it just, it, you, you kind of mentioned with your, with your quotes afterwards that you were in the heat of the moment, but it seemed like there was still some tension between you and Mark as well. Uh, I mean, were you still heated and do you still feel that way now or was it just that moment? Is there still tension between the two of you guys? No, nah, there's no tension. Uh, I got my hand raised. What can he say, you know? So, what, what, hey, Drakkar, it's Jim, Greasehopper from AZ. Um, as a guy who's seen you come up through the ranks and seen a lot of your fights along the way, everybody who's tried to get in there and brawl with you and throw hands with you has met the same fa fate that he met tonight. I didn't think it was that close. I'm with you on that one. I thought you won all three rounds. But can you just take us through your evolution and the improvement? And just now that you're here on this stage, you just keep getting better and better and showing people what you're truly made of inside. Like I said, uh, I got to dedicate everything to uh, Benson Henderson, John Crouch, Eddie Chaw, all my teammates at the MMA lab, you know, because if it wasn't for, th for them, I wouldn't be here. Um, we have a great team down there. We have something special. Um, I know a lot of people don't believe in uh, our team, but, hey, we're up on the rise. Where do you go from here? I mean, I know you'll take anybody they throw your way, but... This year in particular, what are your goals for the rest of this year in the UFC? Uh, hopefully get uh, one more fight and then fight in Detroit in, uh, in my hometown. Or not my hometown, but my home state, you know. Uh, that's it. I just want to fight in Detroit. Um, it, it looked like the, over here, uh, to your right. Uh, looked like the commission had a few things to say to you. Um, what, what did they say to you immediately afterward after you got in Mark's face and, and screamed? Uh, they told me I was just, you know, getting a little too crazy, you know. Uh, I understand that, you know, I was just the heat of the moment. Uh, if I can go back, I would change that, you know. I would uh, compose myself a little better. What was it in particular, what were you feeling that made you want to do that uh, in that moment? What is, what is it about Mark that makes you want to, you know, go across the cage after, after winning the fight? <clears throat> just, just him just talking. All week he was talking, talking, talking. Uh, I think that's what he does to get in his, his opponent's head. Uh, he intimidates him like that. I'm a different breed. Uh, I, tra I train with Benson Henderson every day. I get beat up by him. Uh, this guy, he, he's not going to go in there and do that to me, you know, so. Was there a particular moment that you felt you had him? All 15 minutes. Question over here for Drakkar. Um, Brad Tavares told us afterwards that at the fighter meeting yesterday that he walked up to you and sat next to you and said that I was, he said, I'm going to knock you out. Is that true? Did that happen? <laughs> yeah. And uh, after the fight, I was like, hey, I thought you were going to put me to sleep. You know, uh, didn't happen. Did you feel that he crossed the line 
this week with any of the stuff? Did it get no, too close? No, I, I just I knew that's how he is. He he likes to get in his uh, you know, in uh, fighters' heads, but not mine. Do you feel like he's overrated? Yes. And finally, for me, do you feel like you were kind of put in this position as sort of the opponent? Uh, you know, International Fight Week, it's his big American debut, all that stuff. Did you feel like the UFC was kind of setting you up to be the opponent for, you know, his star to shine a little brighter? Um, I'm not sure. They could put me against, uh, against anyone. Uh, I'll fight Khabib. I'll fight anyone. I don't care. Just put me in there. I'm going to get my hand raised. Andrew Carr, over here. Uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, you were an underdog heading into this fight. Do you feel like this was the fight where people finally got to see, you know, this is what you're capable of and kind of your coming out, out party tonight in this matchup? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be an underdog every fight, you know what I mean? That just makes me train harder. Uh, you know, I was reading everything uh, what you guys were writing about, about this fight, saying uh, Dia, Casey, whatever his name is, was going to knock me out. You know, that just gave me the extra motivation to go in the gym and push harder. I was probably in the best shape of my life going into this fight. And do you feel like also with your wrestling background and, your, you know, all that, do you feel like he overlooked that in this fight and, you know, didn't really uh, give you the respect that, that you have in, in the wrestling skill set? Yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, he respect me, so it is what it is. And uh, just looking at the uh, the division right now, is there anyone that sort of stands out to you as, as a next opponent on that Detroit card? Because uh, I know you really want to, you know, get on there and put on a show. Whoever they get me, I'll take uh, whoever won tonight in the final or in the main event. Uh, Jakar, there was at one point you were calling over to Mark saying that. Uh, that Mark, Mark Goddard, you were saying that Mark was grabbing your glove and then there was the issue with the, the low blow. Were there other moments where you guys were getting chippy and maybe fouling each other on purpose in there? No, it, it, he, was, uh, he was pretty nice, you know, like uh, when he needed me in my nuts, he was like, oh, I'm sorry, you know what I mean? Like, I, I was kind of surprised by that. But the referee did say that he didn't grab your glove. Were you in any way trying to get attention for something that wasn't happening? Uh, I'm pretty sure he had his uh, his fingers inside, you know.